This is a serious battle of the will. It was almost a magical time. It was so late at night. Now all I'm thinking about is scoring. Bounces it outside to the 10, to the 5, touchdown! For all you can do is put yourself in a position to have a chance to win, and I thought we did that. Well protected to the end zone, Jack Armstead! You don't want to make a mistake. Oh, it is no good wide right. I mean, they were pounding on us, and we were pounding on them. Throw this time, and has a man open, and it is incomplete. We ran out of two-point plays. <laughs> That's OK, sweetheart. It won't be much longer. A couple more hours, and we'll be out of here. Welcome to SEC Rewind. I'm Joe Tessitore. For some games, earning the title of a classic takes time and a bit of debate. For others, it's apparent as the game is being played. You can put our next game in the ladder. The 2001 Arkansas Ole Miss game. It started off as your typical SEC battle. It slowly transformed into a marathon, a seven overtime thriller that still shares the record for most overtimes in a football bowl subdivision game. Here's Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Mike Golick with the call from Oxford, Mississippi. Welcome back. Sold out. Bought Hemingway Stadium, 45,000 capacity this year. Houston Nutt in his fourth year as the head coach of the Razorbacks, and maybe no one in the country has had a better in-season turnaround this year. David Cutcliffe, his third year with the Ole Miss Rebels, has never lost to Arkansas 2-0. And, oh. and tonight, as we said, Ole Miss playing for a share of first place in the SEC West. Arkansas has won the toss and elected to receive the opening kick. And Lee Rogers is set to kick it deep to Lawrence Richardson or Marvin Jackson. Ole is entertaining with Ole Miss and Arkansas get together and we're underway and this will be Richardson from the goal line. And a return of 25 yards, and Arkansas will start from the 25. And we'll see the two heavy quarterback system again this week, but it begins with Zach Clark, the sophomore from Fayetteville, son of an assistant Arkansas baseball coach, who says we are starting to find our identity on offense, and that is major progress. Rest of the bud, offensive starters, tally, another start at tailback, Lancaster two ways, some defensive end two, with Wilson Smith and Ball heading the receiving core. Progress means they've gone from averaging 103 total yards in their first two games, 317 total yards since. And Clark right to the air with all day to pick out a receiver, and it's overthrown, intended for Jason Peters, converted defensive end now at tight end. And the offensive line for Arkansas is a big group. It is a big group already led by true freshman Sean Andrews. Right tackle number 73, thought by many to be the best high school offensive lineman in the country a year ago. The Ole Miss defensive front, a very small group with the exception of Kenny Jackson at 309. Everybody else undersized. You ever seen a number 32 at defensive tackle? That's converted linebacker Anthony Sims. Ole Miss very quick. Everyone that's played them says they play very hard all night long. First good of the day to Tally. He comes around the left corner and run out of bounds near the 31 yard line. Ole Miss linebacking four. Yeah, well, you mentioned the D line. Jackson was size. The only one with size of that linebacker is Eddie Strong, 245 pounds. Last four games, he's averaged at least 10 tackles a game. This is the number two pass defense in the country, and they're led by Senator Taylor, all SEC at free safety last year, but moved to corner for this his senior season, and he's their leader with three interceptions. Eddie Strong, the junior strong side linebacker, their leading tackler. Missed all last year with a stress fracture in his left foot and making up the last time. A third and a slide. Clark with the short out, and it's caught by George Wilson. A very interesting thing to see here. The most interesting to me with Arkansas on offense is how Houston Nutt is going to go with his two QB system. Mike told us in the open what they did last year. There it is as a reminder. Jones, a big 6'5", lanky guy, runs faster than he looks. Zach Clark has gone from highly inaccurate early in the year to 
Very accurate now. And Matt Jones, the true freshman from Fort Smith. Able to check in either at quarterback or possibly wide receiver. Clark again overthrowing Jason Peter. Lucky that one wasn't intercepted. That was a five-yard pass that he wanted to uh, to get to Jason Peters, and Jason Peters is going to be an interesting one to watch tonight for Arkansas. Six foot five, three hundred and five pound tight end. Where is football going, Bill? You're just jealous because he got moved from defensive tackle to tight end, and they didn't do that for you. <laughs> he can run four seven. He can catch that. Too. Beats your five seven. <laughs> With Corey Birmingham, another true freshman, in a tailback, and he gets it on the ground, and he is hit immediately for no game. And Kenny Jackson leading the charge along with L.P. Spence, who is the SEC Defensive Player of the Week. Jackson leading the charge along with L.P. Spence, who is the SEC Defensive Player of the Week for his effort last week. Eight tackles, two sacks, forced a fumble against LSU. You will see Ole Miss lining up all over the ballpark on defense. Then you'll see Arkansas do the same. And in a minute or two, I'm going to tell you why you'll see the similarities. Third and ten for a team that does not convert any third down. With four wides and Clark from the shotgun. They come after him with Strong diving at his ankles. They hurry him into an incompletion. Intended for Birmingham. They brought Strong and Lanier Gothi on a blitz, and it worked. Clark got outside of that, but he doesn't throw as well on the run as he does in the pocket. He has a little escapability problem, and he has some problems when he's running. You're going to see Mississippi coming right up the gut with Gothi and Strong coming from the outside. Zach Clark pays the price with an incompletion. So on comes a junior from Harrison, Arkansas, Richie Butler. At nearly 43 yards per kick, Jason Armstead is deep for a miss. Pretty good kick. Armstead with a fair catch at the 20. 41 yard effort by Butler. Second down, and this leap is good for six, and Joe Dunn has Ole Miss on the board. You know, the great athletes can sit there and tell you every down and uh, every play and you know, every ball and strike count and, and everything that they've ever done. I mean, every pitch, every shot, every pass. And in this game, they had no idea. Two of his first 12 through the air. He's hit three straight and going again on that left side for Wilson, who is inbounds with 25 seconds. Arkansas calls its last timeout to stop the clock as Wilson gets him to the two. They've scored 12 out of 14 times in the red zone, but only six of those have been touchdowns. One of their problems in the early going this year, and I'll guarantee you, Coach Nutt does not want to kick a field goal here. No. No, you need to, you need to cash this one. Another good throw, another underthrown, low and away throw by Clark. To Wilson, I think he wanted him to get it out of bounds on that one and not have to waste that time out. Seneca Taylor again on the coverage. What do you do here now, Bill? What, what's the call? Can you run it wide? Do you try and get back? Well, run it wide against Ole Miss, I don't think uh, it's tough to do. They're too fast. You get your quarterback on the corner. Yep. He either throws it in the end zone, trying to get the touchdown, runs it in, or, or throws, throws it away. It, throw it up. It, regardless, you get the clock stopped. And if he's going to be tackled, you tell him to get rid of that football. Some nice construction he can throw it into. Yeah, yeah. all the way into the yeah. top deck. <laughs> this is not a Ken Trevor project right here of our able spotter and booth man most of the other projects we've seen this year have been ken trevor blacksburg virginia and um, fayetteville arkansas what was he to design them yeah he's blushing shaking my hand he's so proud actually a very able foreman on the that's stadium. right michelle's at home smiling he owes you money for that oh yeah from the two second and goal we saw Brandon O'Donohoe, the kicker, they hope to keep on the bench. And they punch it in for six. Cobbs getting wide, and he will walk in. Good job, Good job. We may be seeing the rebirth of Cedric Cobbs here tonight in this first half. 
Actually, I don't think this was a good call. It worked only because yeah. Eddie Strong missed the tackle. Eddie Strong's got him nailed for about a six-yard loss. He's the best defensive player. He's loose in the backfield, unblocked. you got to count on your main man making that play. And Eddie knows it. He's sick about it. Because if he gets him on the ground, they got to kick the field goal. Yeah, they'd have to kill the clock and uh, try and kick it. There was a penalty after unnecessary roughness on Seneca Taylor on a late hit on Cobbs after the touchdown. But that's the Cobbs that they saw two years ago. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and Bill talked about how he's been nicked up, and it's very difficult as you get nicked up during the year. Obviously, everybody gets nicked up, but it wears and tears on. You never get back to 100% again. Once you start with the little well, nagging ankles, knees, especially hamstrings. Especially the first time you go through it. The right. kid's never been hurt before. He had that bad shoulder that cost him the season last year. Then he comes back, and it's tough. So O'Donohoe to tie it up with 20 seconds to go in the half, and he stays perfect on the year. Eddie Strong loose in the backfield right here. You'll see him run through and be clean, which is exactly what the scheme calls for. No blocker on. you got to make that play, Mr. Strong. Wasn't that a good play, though, by Cobbs? No, a good play, play by, by Strong. Give him a little hand here. Give him a little, little stiff yes. arm. That works, and he gets power. to the outside. Absolutely a nice job, because that play was not designed to go there. Houston Nutt, at times, has buried Cobbs on the bench. He's taken the mothballs off this first half, and uh, he could still be a major factor the rest of the year for oh, us. I think they're counting on him being just that. Down to Michelle. Well, the mood on this Arkansas sideline is elation over the score, but a very business-like approach, as though they expected to score. And this win on the road would be so pivotal for Arkansas, and they look as though they feel like they belong right here, guys. They have never beaten Ole Miss over here. Of course, they used to play as non-conference rivals. Arkansas was in the Southwest Conference in Little Rock and in Jackson. So it's just recently that they've moved to the on-campus facility. And uh, Ole Miss blasted Arkansas in Fayetteville last year, 38-24. Armstead. Pretty nice return. With the 35, 26 yards with 13 seconds for Manning to work with. Maybe the shower worked, guys. Bill, that's something I hadn't heard about before. Michelle, before, as Michelle told us in the beginning of the game, that Houston Nutt said they're going to travel about an hour away. They're going to do their uh, come out on the field. They're going to go in and then take a shower and wake up because, you know, you, you get a little tired when the games are late in the day. So we tried this. I know I'd never done that in college or pro. And you said you hadn't either. Kind of a new approach. And, cleanest team in the league. Well, there you have it. Plus, they don't have to shower after the game now. That's exactly yeah. right. And that was Mike and mine conclusion. <laughs> That's good. We won't have to take a shower after it. Just the 24th snap for Eli Manning. Arkansas has had 44. They've kept the ball away from the Ole Miss offense. And Joe Gunn will carry on the last play of the first half. And Houston Nutt encouraged as well he should be with a 7-7 halftime tie. Eli Manning, when he's been in, 6-9, 61 yards. But Cedric Cobbs has returned to be a big factor tonight for Arkansas. 7-7 to Reese Davis. And a hold of Dow Loggins for the lead. 45. No problem. Brandon O'Donohoe has Arkansas on top. Arkansas, the number 114 ranked offense in the country, has outgained powerful Ole Miss group by 70 yards. They need seven on second down, and Jones just does get that one off, and it's almost intercepted, but twice he avoids disaster. It's off the hands of Matt Breer. Great job of finally getting rid of the ball, but make it a little more obvious. Get it way out of bounds. Well, you know, nice job escaping because you can't afford to lose some yards here. You can you get in field goal range. He avoids it once and twice and then tries to get it out of there. It's a great job of avoiding the sack. They would have been out of field goal range. L.P. Spence and Josh Cooper in his face. A lot of speed on the Mississippi defense. Not much size, a lot of speed. So Justin Coleman again come out to pick up the only Arkansas wide man, Richard Smith. Two tight ends. Play action. 
Going deep for Smith. Diving catch. No. Couldn't hang on. It happens again. Boy, it looked like he had that at the three. For the lead now on fourth and seven, O'Donohoe is going to try a 45-yarder. And I watched him in warm-ups, and he hit a couple from 50, but just getting over the crossbar. So this certainly within his range. This is a good angle for a right-footed kicker on a long kick. It can start it out at the upright, right upright, and hook it in. And this will be the longest of his career. Going best is 38 yards. And a hold of Dow Loggins for the lead. 45, no problem. Brennan O'Donohoe has Arkansas on top. The sophomore out of El Dorado, Arkansas. Quiet. A sold-out bought Hemingway Stadium. 10-7. You One call two. it, Bill. You call the started toward the one upright and just kind of hooked a little bit in. One thing to notice about this, it was a well-executed kick, but it was low. He did not have good trajectory. He kicked the ball low, and if he tries another long one, you can bet your bottom dollar that Ole Miss will have a middle block on and they'll have a shot at getting a piece of it. They've got an Ole Miss wide awake right now, trailing 10-7. They have Armstead back. 5.32 to go, and Ole Miss still trying to figure out the Arkansas defense. First drive of the second half. Looked like they were going to punch it in. They got a 56-yard moment to Doug Ziegler completion to get it down close. And a short field goal went wide. Armstead returns this one, crossing left to right. And a big return it is. The kicker, Carlton, knocking him out of bounds at the 40. A 53-yarder. And now everybody's away. You look for that spark. You don't know where it's going to come from or when it's going to happen. But team in Ole Miss's situation right now needed the spark. And there it is. The way you return a kickoff is just like this. You explode through the wedge not knowing whether you're going to get hammered or you're going to hit the crease. And that way, if the crease is there, you get a chance to hit it. Armstead, a courageous and a lightning fast return. Junior from Moss Point as Eli Manning set up at the 40. And Joe Gunn through the middle, close to 10, the first down. Gunn with a neck problem in the first half. They checked him, said he was good to go, and back in indeed. Tenth carry, 39 yards. The gun has done over 2,400 career yards tonight. Third in the all-time Ole Miss list. They got nine. Marker down. They run the reverse and the fullback. And Manning from Armstead so low that he had to go to his knee at the 25, but a marker is down. Yeah, you got a quick flag, too. So either someone in the neutral zone or not on defense or not enough people on the line of scrimmage on the offense when the flag came out that quick. Last week, and it is shift against uh, Ole Miss, but last week that worked for Nebraska, didn't work for Oklahoma, and maybe put some ideas in a few coaches' heads around the country. This is an illegal formation or an illegal shift. Illegal shift on the offense, two men in motion, five-yard penalty, it's still second down. The rule says you can only have one guy moving at a time. And off, come back, and Mr. Manning's going to take it right outside. I didn't see the second man I move. I didn't see the second man move either. And Eli's going to have to work with Armstead on his passing. Yeah. After all that, second and six. Adding play action. This is Stackhouse. Hmm. Stays on his yeah. feet to the 17. I like Stackhouse. What a man with that football. I think he should have more touches in this game. He was big time from fullback and tailback against LSU. Tough to tackle, nice soft hands. Eli says, this is where you throw the ball to your guy. And again, the fullback. We saw Arkansas use the fullback with Mark Pierce. We see Eli Manning and Ole Miss use it with Stackhouse. And he gets the home stay. He gets 17 yards and a Mississippi first down at the 18. Motion out of the backfield by Robert Williams. Manning throwing for Williams. To the 15 and more. 
to the six first and goal. 12 yards. Short passes have been the key to this Ole Miss drive. Williams will limp off the field. I talked about one of the big men on the field, Terrence Metcalf. Watch him move. He can motor right here. You're going to see him get to the outside. That's a big man job about taking care of two guys. The road grader moving two out of the way. We know we can go straight ahead. Now we see him go sideways. Ziegler split out. One of the tight end. Wide. And now comes in motion. Gone for Williams at tailback. On first and goal at the sixth. Manning carries out the fake beautiful. <laughs> Rolling. And now has to throw it into the first row. All that coming up empty. But what a fake. <laughs> wow. You know, Talking about fundamentals yeah. of football, beautiful ball handling. This is stuff learned over a long, long period of time. He makes the football disappear. It's on his hip. Carlos, very, Hall. very pregnant pause. <laughs> a long pause. The defense has no idea what's going on, but they can't get the receiver to the right place. Somebody got knocked down on a drag that was supposed to be over there with, uh, with Eli. I actually like ball handling. Second and goal. And Zebra in motion. And a handoff for a yard for Stackhouse. Boy, they have to be sick on that last play, Bill. That was executed beautifully by Eli Manning. Just sucked in Carlos Hall and nobody out there to throw it to. What a, a waste of just a fantastic execution. Well, two plays. You think about the quarterback throwback. Right. It would have been a, a, a walk-in with a good throw and without some kind of strange penalty. And then that play where the receiver didn't get over there to be with Eli. There's that balance we talked about in the beginning. The balance the has only produced seven points. And they've had to settle for field goal attempts twice all year. If they don't pick this one up, they're going to have to settle for it twice and a bad snap. Manning covers it at the 14, and we've not seen this all year out of Ole Miss. And you saw what happened. Ben Claxton was changing the protection, so Eli went up and changed as well. And then the play clock was running down. He gave a quick signal for Claxton to snap the ball. And I don't think Peyton was ready. Or yeah, Peyton. Eli was ready for it. See, I'm he was looking to his we right. done that earlier. 32 yarder for the tie by Nichols. He was wide right from 20. Only one of the three from the year. It was a 27 yarder. This one also drifting right, but not before it gets inside that right upright early, and it's 10 all. First and goal at the key. Pierce, touchdown. Arkansas back in front. They come after him. He gets it. it scared me a little bit, Eli coming to Ole Miss. But I thought it was good. Eli, we, we had a good quarterback here, and he, he redshirted. Then he backed up. Then he had a chance to play three years, which is good. He needed that. You know, Peyton kind of got thrown to the fire as a true freshman. He did fine. But Eli needed that. He needed that red shirt and that, that backup year. Ole Miss playing for a piece of first place in the West. They got their hands full. Tally. Arkansas on second and three. Still on the ground for Tally. With 180 pounds, there's a lot of heart and a lot of leg drive down there. And Eddie Strong grabs him, holds on to 44. Here's another third and short coming for the Hogs. Their need, well, their need is going to be two here. The Ole Miss defense can morph into a bunch of things. Look at this is a base 50 defense with two lines. The old 5-2. The next time they come up, it'll be a 4-3 or a Bears with both guards covered or a double eagle. It can be anything, and you never know what you'll be. 4-3 here. Juan Jones keeping on the option. Matt Jones inside the 40. They look for him to go up the middle again. Instead, he keeps wide, and it's 16 yards. Great fake. Great block by Mark Bokerman, the right guard. Sean Andrews, the right tackle. And then George Wilson, the wide receiver, you'll see down the field as well. First, it starts with the fake. O-line moving him. Now look downfield, 88 Wilson. 
Look at him staying in front of the defender, giving Jones a few extra yards. 99 on the ground for him last week, the most by an Arkansas quarterback in 12 years. And tonight, six carries, 27 yards. That's the big one. Again, the option. This time on the pitch is to Corey Birmingham. Running out of room and into blue jerseys, and he gets two. I'm not sure I understood what Houston Nutt meant when he said this big old long-legged guy doesn't look fast, but he is. Yeah. It's I mean, deceiving. Got those long strides. Well, it's not real quick. You watch people like Spence who can fly trying to catch him. You yep. can't catch him. <laughs> Houston Nutt won the recruiting battle over schools like Oklahoma, Tennessee, and Miami. A lot of people have their eye on Jones at a Fort Smith. Through the middle, big hole, Mark Pierce at the 26, and Arkansas gouging the Ole Miss defense 12 more yards. Reese Davis. If ever a player were perfectly named to play for Nebraska, it is Ben Cornelson. Ben returning a punt against Kansas, and look at Ben putting the corn into Cornelson. The children of the corn. We've now put Nebraska up 37 0. We're going up the middle on first down for Pierce and the freshman. Getting uh, coming out of sorts tonight. And suddenly we're seeing triple option football. This is this is really wishbone football from the eye with the quarterback putting the ball in the fullback stomach and reading what the defensive linemen are doing and then either leading it in the fullback stomach or pulling it. Tough to get ready for. Jones again with a give to the fullback. And Pierce is close to another first. What he's doing is he's looking at the defensive lineman. If the defensive lineman closes, he pulls it out. If not, he leaves it in. That time, they sort of went together. They that did. was not per perfect triple option. He, he really held it in there. He leaves, he leaves his hands in too long. He's a little indecisive. Get your hands out of there, Mark. Okay, I got this ball. Either that or Pierce took it away from him. One of the two. Here we are again. Third and inches, Jones sneaking easily. First down inside the 15. Well, I'm glad he made that one because I'm tired of guessing. First and 10, no Arkansas. guess right there. With Zach Clark watching Jones handle it on this drive. You have to say they've, they've been equally effective, wouldn't you? Yep, absolutely. And it was interesting to get Zach's take when we talked to him. He's glad to see Mark coming in, doing a good job, and he sort of gets a better perspective for when he goes back. Cedric Cobbs in at the tailback. Here's the only Arkansas touchdown. Takes it right side. And he keeps going up the sideline. He's inside the 10. That looked like he had no room at all. He's going to get eight yards out of it. He just tucked in behind Sasha Lancaster and Sean Andrews and just followed him. Andrews out. He's just going to tuck in. Watch these two right here. He's just going to tuck in behind. Stays with him. Stays with him. Tuck in behind. Say, so they can't see me back here. Wow, big old Andrews. <laughs> He's a load. Oh, oh, 73. When they made like... him a starter is when this offense started. To That's right. Yeah, you're right. Game three on. Different group. Jones again with the long... Handoff. Yeah, I mean, how much longer can he hold it out there well, before Pierce takes it? It's not supposed to take that long, <laughs> but this is not something that they do as a steady diet. They're really taking a little bit of a risk here because that ball gets knocked out. If you're hit at the junction point where that ball's in the fullback's stomach, then you drop it. That's how they've gotten to this point. They have kept the Ole Miss offense to 40 plays. <laughs> and this drive is about to have its 15th play run by the Hawks. First and goal at the key. Pierce, touchdown. Arkansas back in front. I'll tell you, that Pierce is coming along, and those good guys up front to continue to get down there low and knock the smaller Ole Miss players back. Rosarius White, 66. Kenny Sandlin, 57. Nice job. How about freshman to freshman? Jones and Pierce. Yeah. I think he's not going to remember his first college touchdown. We're, we're talking two true freshmen. O'Donohoe, 17 10, Arkansas. 10 minutes and 18 seconds to go. 
Weather for Texas product, Mark Pierce. Three on the play clock. Again, beats the pressure. Fire is going to turn in to the 20. His favorite target tonight, red shirt freshman Bill Flowers. Now they have to deal with an Ole Miss fourth quarter machine. Ole Miss has dominated fourth quarter, and they've not looked like themselves at all tonight. But they still have 10 minutes plus. Short kick. Short return. And Eli Manning will take over at the 27-yard line. Let's check in with Michelle. Well, Dave, moments ago on the Ole Miss sideline, the Mississippi coaches were bellowing for German Bellow, the backup left guard. It looks like he's going to have to replace Buckles, who has strained his left calf, and he strained it on that last Ole Miss drive, and at this point, not expected to return, so Bellow will get the work on the line, Dave. German, who speaks five languages, not, oddly enough, including German. <laughs> First down, 28-yard line. Manning to work. Play action starts with a strike. And Chris Collins battling a high ankle sprain. Not much in evidence as a threat tonight. That's good for nine yards. Manning's fourth quarter passer rating is off the charts. It's 21 points over any other quarter. It's 181 for what that's worth. Well, it's worth a lot in, in the context of picking it up in the fourth quarter, whether or not you and I like the passing efficiency formula. The guy's good. This does show that this yeah. is his best quarter of all. 90 to 24, they have outscored their opponents in the fourth quarter. Joe Gunn for the first down to the 40. And just as important, they've picked up all the big plays when they've had to go for it on fourth downs in the fourth quarter. They've gotten 73 percent of them. So add it all up. This should be a very confident Ole Miss team, there despite eight, their struggles. Absolutely. Tonight. Eight out of 11 on fourth down, and that says a lot about poise and discipline. There's no panic here. No panic with Ole Miss. They get all three of their timeouts. Arkansas only one. Manning, another short toss, caught by Stackhouse. And knocked out of bounds by Caleb Miller at the 47-yard line. In normal circumstances, you think plays. When the chips are down, you think players. Who are your pressure guys? Who can deliver in the clutch? Stackhouse got to be one of them. Obviously, Eli. And when they were successful on Eli earlier, Arkansas, was when they brought some pressure and got in his face and took him out of his rhythm a little bit. The last two passes have been quick and right on rhythm. Ole Miss outgained by 105 yards tonight. Only 232 total. Still only one score away. Manning throwing that one and a tough catch made at midfield by Collins for another first down. The ultimate compliment. For Chris Collins from his head coach yesterday said he is truly a warrior and no football player wants to hear any words other than that. That's right and David Cutcliffe went on to define a warrior. He's a guy that will do whatever it takes regardless of the circumstances to get the job done. Look at the concentration. Evidence right there. Got it done at the 50 first and 10 again. Out of the eye, gun, big room. And then closing quickly after a gain of six. Ohio State, this is second and four. Manning rolling. And again, knows when to wave the white flag. Throws it away and settles for third down. He doesn't waste any time doing that. He knows when there's nothing there. He knows just to get out of the pocket and throw it away. Perfectly legal to do. No grounding there as long as it goes past the line of scrimmage. But, Mike, of the, of the films we've studied, this is the first time we've seen him not necessarily confused but unable to find open yeah. receivers in proper sequence and having to unload the ball this many times. Subpar numbers for him, and especially on third downs when they are only one for eight tonight. Coming after him. He gets it off for Rayford in the first down to the 39. Only their second convert. Omar Rayford, senior out of Holly Springs. 
Well, Eli stood right in there. Three guys came around him. He stood right in there, knew where he was going with the ball, knew he was going to get hit, and he did by Jermaine Petty. Rayford comes underneath, a little rub-off route there. He also knows he's going to get hit, concentrates, tucks, puts it away. First down. Seven and a half minutes in the quarter. And regulation. And then one deep for Collins, mano a mano. That time with Lawrence Richardson. And they both did some jostling. Yeah. Once the yeah. crowd wants it on Richardson, it's a no call. No harm, no foul. Yeah. Jocelyn. Absolutely. A little jockey in for position here, Mike. Both of them banging a little bit. Yeah, you let that go. You let him play ball. Ole Miss went for a little bit here. They've been efficient, if unspectacular, on this drive. And this is the first, first time they really tried to hit it. This time they go four wide in the shotgun. And down to three on the play clock. Again, beats the pressure. Fowler is going to turn in to the 20. His favorite target tonight, red shirt freshman Bill Flowers. A gain of 20. This whole formation is designed to get Flowers manned up one-on-one. -on -one. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. They have to be in man coverage. No free safety. He's coming right in here. Ahmad lets him inside no that's Richardson lets him inside that's a mistake no no help from the middle nice catch good catch of the night first start he's got 66 yards for man and gun trying to bounce that one outside and a very short game down to Michelle the Arkansas defense bending a little bit here but after their one and three start this season John Thompson held a closed meeting with the defense said what can I do to change this around and no one wanted to answer but then Kurt Davis stood up and said we aren't having any fun you need to relax and let us play and have fun and we'll produce Thompson said if that's what you want me to do let's meet in the middle and the defense says that was the turning point of this season a bigger turning point would be stopping all this right now Dave and an impressive admission by a coach that maybe he can change too and all for the better yeah, yeah. And, and Bill, I mean, that, that's really a testament to John Thompson because uh, that what Dave said is right. You know, for a coach to change like that, Michelle giving the story of him saying, okay, what can I do? You don't normally hear a coach say that. It's, it's you do it my way. Well, John has a remarkable relationship and a concern about really including his men as a part of the process. He learned that from Don Lindsay. Delay game on the defense, non-football lag causing the offense to move, five-yard penalty, still second down. They call out the snap count. Somebody in the official's judgment, Houston doesn't quite agree. John is uh, also assisting in the discussion. You see both, you see both yeah. guards move. Oh, you see Kurt, they're right there, the nose tackle. We'll, we'll, we'll get a shot to show that again. We'll show you what he did. Second down and five. And squeezing through his gun inside the five. First and goal. He almost stayed on his feet all the way to the end zone. Nice job by Claxton. Good football player. This center, number 55, Ben Claxton, takes his man, handles him. Nice pull. Almost pops loose. Joe Gunn, senior, Amory, Mississippi, has their only touchdown tonight. Almost got a second from the four. 538 and counting. Same thing, nothing this time. Kurt Davis on the tackle, and I want to go back to that penalty against where everybody understands as a defensive line or defense, you used to be able to jump into the neutral zone and then get back. Now if you jump into the neutral zone, the offense moves, it's on the defense. Here's what happened. Watch his left arm. It's going to move. Well, just when he does that, that's simulating the start of the play. Defenders cannot do that either. He didn't go into the neutral zone, but he made a quick movement that the referees thought was a thought to start the play, so the call was on Davis for that. He might have bar barked a little something, too. Same spot from the four, second and goal after the first Mississippi timeout. Stumbles after the snap, fires complete, touchdown! 
Jason Armstead. Aided bumpers, foggy headlights, weathered. Nichols. Armstead with a touchdown, 450 to go, 17 all. Cobb bounces it outside to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown. What a great call. Exactly where I would have gone. That's where an athletic person like Matt Jones, uh, to be a freshman and to look in his eyes on the sideline, to be very, very mature, ice water in his veins. He wanted the ball. He wanted to, to, to lead the team. He was ready to execute. But the thing that makes him so good is when things are under duress or when someone misses a block, he can escape. It was kind of a two quarterback system. Uh, and we had Coach David Lee, who uh, kind of brought the Wildcat to the NFL, but he had an option background, and so I was the option quarterback. Fast, all he does is do a great job of hiding the ball, and he just makes yards. Look here, he looks like he stood up. He makes four more yards. Uh, Coach Lee called down on the, uh, the headphone and said, uh, their safety is not moving over. You know how, how he looks. He's, the safety's not doing this. We're going to go with you for a while now. And we started running the option and uh, started having a lot of success. And just to remind you, overtime instituted in 1996. They've had the coin toss. Everybody gets a possession starting at the 25 until we have a winner. No game clock. And beginning with the third overtime, you can't kick the extra point anymore. You have to start going for two. As we said, Ole Miss 5-2 and two all time in overtime. This is only the third overtime game ever for Arkansas, and they've all involved the state of Mississippi. They're 2-0. and oh. Both wins were over Mississippi State. 16-13 and 96, and again last year, 17-10 over the Bulldogs. So here they go, and they start conservatively with a give up the middle for Pierce and no game. The reason why teams win the choice, win the toss and choose defense, they want to see what that opposing offense has to do to see what they're going to have to do to try and win the game really helps their, how they're going to go in with their play calling. Do they Don need three? Do they need a touchdown yeah. or what? Don Lindsay confusing the read of the quarterback with a cross charge and really strong, hitting him right at the line of scrimmage. They're also going this way with a win out their back. Jones and the option keeper. Still on his feet. Gets an extra couple of yards out of that. Down to the 18, third and three. Michael, that is amazing how he slithers. Something. He just makes yards. He just, look at him, 6'5", 220, doesn't look fast. All he does is do a great job of hiding the ball, and he just makes yards. Look here, he looks like he stood up. He makes four more yards. Got to be frustrating for your defender. Arkansas timeout. You know, I remember a time when Arkansas fans wanted to run Ken Hatfield out of the state because he was running too much option. Yep. Yeah, but I, I, Frank Broyles, to his credit, and others have admitted that it was a mistake to let Kenny Hatfield get out of there. He, he did, he's such a great, great coach. Well, without the option, they are not in this game. That's right. Also, when your quarterback runs for 99 yards last week, the second most rushing yard by an Arkansas quarterback since 89, you start to accept it a little more. And you saw that under the score. You get the one timeout in overtime. So that's it uh, for Arkansas with timeouts. Arkansas with a three-game winning streak coming in. They've all been at home. This would be a rare, big road conference win for Houston Nutt. Non-conference next week. Still in state, November 17th for the Bulldogs, and they close at LSU. And O'Donnell no, had better stay loose over there. Each team gets one timeout per overtime period. They do not carry over to the next overtime, so you can't save them. But that was a wise move by Arkansas to use it there. Two tight ends on third and three. Cedric Hobbs. Left tackle comes up short by a yard. You're talking about fourth and a foot. I had a lot of confidence in Cedric Cobbs and the offensive line during that time. Now do you go for it? Get the three points or do you go for the first down? Boy, tough decisions. And I just felt like we needed more than three points, period. It's like they're going for it. Wow.
when you're on the road, if it's fourth and manageable, and uh, you got a quarterback on the other side like Eli Manning, uh, fourth and one, fourth and two, fourth and three, sometimes you got to go for it. I mean, uh, and we were able to get them to burn a timeout. Ole Miss has got to call time because they don't have the right unit out there. I didn't think they would elect to kick the field goal. I think at that point in time, what they told me was that they felt like they would have a difficult time stopping our offense from the 25-yard line scoring touchdowns. So I expected them to go for it. I know that's taking a risk on their part. Sure is easy to say standing up here. <laughs> well, we'll see if they would. The, you know, there's, there's, there's a few guys that say, well, I don't know, maybe we should just kick it. And uh, I just, I just, in my mind, hey, there's no doubt in my mind, you run the ball, you get the first down, you challenge the offensive line, and you put the ball in a guy's hands like Cedric Cobbs. Fourth and one. Cobb bounces it outside to the 10 to the 5. Touchdown! What a great call. Exactly what I would have done. <laughs> wow. All day it's been the play again. Off the tackle, let the running back decide. This time, Cobb chooses to go outside. Again, you got a receiver blocking downfield. How important is that? Extra point by O'Donohoe, who has not missed all year. 20 out of 20 for a seven-point overtime lead on a breathtaking Cedric Cobb 16-yard touchdown on fourth and one. Number 61, Shannon Money, left offensive tackle, has had a big night all night long. He's lined up right there. Coming off the ball, nails his man, pancakes him on the ground, as does the tight end, opening up the outside. Great job by Richard Smith, downfield blocking. You'll see Cobb cut off his block. It's a great job of blocking downfield to get Cobb the rest of the way into the end zone. That's teamwork right there, gentlemen and Mr. ladies. Nutt has his weapon back. Cobbs have totaled 80 yards rushing all year on 46 carries tonight. He's got 82. Uh, you immediately become uh, conscious of the fact that, hey, we've got four downs to make a first down. So you, you kind of call it that way, maybe a little more conserv conservatively than you would uh, being a, a field goal down or tied. We had all the faith in the world in our defense to go out there and, and stop their offense. I mean, we, we have a such explosive defensive unit, and uh, all our faith was in them. And I believe that their faith was in us to go out there and score each and every time. And two touchdowns on 16 carries. Now can Eli Manning and Ole Miss match? And not a bad start by Joe Gunn. Extra effort for nine yards. They've been trapping him all night long. Nice job. A pull and kick out, number 76, Marcus Johnson, the younger of the Johnson & Johnson crew. He'll be pulling from here in that direction, right up in the field. Boom, nice job. Nice job of everything except clearing the telestrator. I just missed. I got so excited. Second down and one. Football here. And again for Gunn. Should have the first at the 15. Same play. Boy, it looked like he got past the 15. They're marking him in front of the 15. Well, it's where his knee goes. That's yep. where the ball is when his knee touches. That's the way the ball is spotted. And Thought it was got yeah. third down. Yeah. And it is not a, a, a science. It's an art. <laughs> it is not real scientific. What do you do here, Mike? Oh. Too late. Third down. <laughs> I'll tell you after the play. It's yeah. good, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, they did the right thing. The sneak, yeah. perfect call. Yeah, you had that all the way, didn't you? Perfect call. That's, it all the that's way. what you were going to call, I could tell. Mm -hmm. Let me know from David Cutcliffe's face what's at stake. But Manning does have enough for the first right on the 15. The 240-pound Charles Stackhouse helping move the pile just enough. I think he's... I think he's beckoning to the bench saying give me the ball please look for play action as well they just had successful running plays play action may work as well oh, 
Give it again, tailback down, and he's got him four down to the 11. I am becoming more and more of a stack house fan. Yes, he's great with the ball in his hand, but he's also a heck of a lead blocker, and he made the key block on that play. Oh, I tell you, his signal was my shoulder pads are falling off. Well, they sure did. <laughs> well, it sure didn't make him bashful. He just took the linebacker and root hogged him about six yards backwards. So toward Sanford checking in. They're full back to Stackhouse on second down and six. Arkansas by seven in overtime. Manning pumped it. And the throw to the end zone is incomplete, intended for Armstead. It will be third and six. Sorry, it's third down. I mean, it, it's four down territory. They obviously have to get it in the end zone, so they still can get the first down at the five. It's the way they have to approach it. A rare mistake by Eli. I'm not sure what his error was if he didn't look through the proper progression. But he took responsibility. They go four wide. Shotgun. Last time they had a bad snap in this formation. Not here. Quick turn in and incomplete. Intended for Flowers. Last gasp time for Ole Miss. Ahmad Harrell, the Batman from Atlanta. In close, tight coverage on Flowers. Flowers has been hanging on to those the last two weeks. Now you make your choice. You keep the man coverage tight on the outside, and you bring people to try and make Eli make a quick decision here. I think you do. I think that's what you have to do. Put a lot of pressure on those corners, and if that's what's going to happen. They're going to get here. six yards, a touchdown, or it's over. Well protected to the end zone. Armstead. <laughs> Did he thread that needle or what? All week long, the Ole Miss people, especially Langston Rogers, the venerable SID, says this kid can play. This kid can. Now, big mistake. They're running off with the football. Armstead ran off with the football. That's supposed to be a delay of game penalty. Yeah, you need this point here. That would be a five-yarder only. The officials let it go. Nichols has missed only once all year. Just a 20-yard field goal earlier tonight, but he drills this one. And we're tied after one overtime at 24. In, in that situation, the goal line on fourth and six, uh, sometimes on, on, on routes, you, everything gets so uh, crammed in tight that it's hard to run your exact uh, route, and sometimes you just got to be an athlete and a playmaker. I seen the safety, you know, he was trying to help help with the run attack, so I tried to break over top of him, and Eli saw me at the same time. We were just on the same pattern at the, on that particular play, and he hit me in the, in the end zone. Uh, it is no good wide right. We're going to be here a while now. Come on, let's play. When we went into the second overtime, I mean, the DBs out there, they wasn't saying anything. I wasn't saying anything. Everybody, we was just concentrating on the task at hand and just trying to go out there and make plays. So immediately start talking to your defense about strip the ball, you know, turnover. We're trying to create a turnover ourselves. Uh, we were already talking about a maximum uh, block effort on any field goal attempt. So you're too busy to think about uh, anything other than what the job that's in front of you that you have to do. You know, that was the focus, just trying to think about the next play, the next opportunity to compete. Really wasn't a whole lot being said uh, between the, the offense and we were out there. We was kind of real focused, kept doing our same thing. We were executing pretty well. We were moving the ball, so I think we were confident we could go down there and score. Ole Miss into the wind. Manning scrambling, firing for Flowers, complete, and a first down, he's to the 14. Game 11. I think maybe Flowers has found himself a job. Great job, Eli, getting on the corner, buying some time, waiting for his receivers to come to him. That's what Flowers did. Play action. Get on the corner just a little bit. Got yourself some time. Perfect protection by the big guys up front.
Warning. The change. And the running play for Gunn, who's inside the 10 yard line. A gain of eight. And you know, one big difference of this over second overtime than the first is the direction they're going. Mississippi got to choose. They're going right where their fans are, knowing that Arkansas is going to have to go the exact same way. The first overtime, Arkansas chose to go where the construction was going on, didn't have to deal with the fans. When they have the ball, they will have to deal with the fans. Right now, they're dealing with an aroused Ole Miss offense that's just knocking them off the ball. Second down and two. Five for the first down. Yard they need and no gain for Joe Gunn. They've got third and two coming. Big play by the nose guard, Kirk Davis, 94. He knifed in the A gap, got Gunn's feet, got him on the ground. These things, these little things like that are the things that win in OT. We've seen so many second and twos that I turn into third and ones. <laughs> And then fourth and inches. Yeah. And then well, me making a wrong guess. You could also, these uh, offensive coordinators have been conservative. Both head coaches called the plays. Passing set with three wides in the shotgun on third down. But they give it inside for Stackhouse. He's got first and goal at the three. And the big guy just would not be denied. Got those legs pumping and pads down. Ripped through for the first. He got jumped on his back like somebody was trying to rope a steer. Well, if I'm an NFL scout, I'm going to get Stackhouse on my Why don't you just try to jump it. on his back? Look at those pads. Look at those pads down. Jermaine Brooks just trying to hop on his back and got a little ride. 290 pounds of Jermaine Brooks. Armstead is left. Flowers is right. First and goal. Three-yard line. Tied in our second overtime at 24. Well done. That's the kind of leap you look for at the goal line, not at the three. There is a time and place to leap, Joe. And Joe is a great leaper. I mean, he goes up and over as well as anybody I've seen this year in college football, but not from the four-yard line. It's a long leap. The play's pretty well blocked, but somebody went up. Jermaine Petty, about 250 pounds of Jermaine, met him in midair. No gain, same set. Second and goal, play action, short toss is too short for Stackhouse. It was underthrown, and again, Eli says, my bad. That, when you're running, you're running away from the quarterback, that ball's got to be above your knees. He had Stackhouse, who he threw it to. He had Ziegler behind him in the end zone. He had one of two choices, went for the shorter, looked like easier pass, but still threw it too low. Well, nobody said he was perfect. Maybe his mom. Yeah. Like your mom and my mom. Pretty much. And Dave's mom. Four wides. They run the shotgun. They ran it out of this last time for Stackhouse. And there's the snap and a sack from behind. Jamar Gallon. Oh, boy. Has spent all kinds of time in the Ole Miss backfield. And he causes a fumble at Arkansas coming up with it. A gambling defensive call, an intelligent gamble. Jamar Gallon, number 39, coming off the edge. And remarkably, because of the poor snap, Eli did not see him, did not realize he was coming, got hit from behind, the ball came out. Snaps low, difficulty handling it, and a little loss of presence. This is why, understandably. this is why when you win the toss, you choose defense. Now Arkansas knows all they need is a field goal. I would suspect you'll see nothing but runs here. Keep it conservative and, lie and get in position for a field goal for the win. Dallin turns it over to Jones in the Arkansas offense. Any score wins now. And they start with Cedric Hobbs and five yards. And now Mississippi saying they coughed it up at the end. There's a whole lot of down. jostling at the bottom of those piles and the ball being ripped at. These By two the way, teams they credit on the recovery of the nose guard, Kurt Davis. Kurt Davis, Davis has risen to the, the OT occasion. They come down to O'Donohoe to decide it. 
Dobbs again. About two this time, another third down coming. All right, Bill, now how important is it here to run the ball where the kicker wants the spot from? Very, very, and I was just about to say, most right-footed kickers would prefer to kick off the left hash. It would be very wise to get in the middle of the field, or if you can't get down in the middle of the field, get over on this left time hash out. as opposed to where they are. That is their only time out. I called all of them up on the sideline, called every one of them up. I said, hey, guys, w the crowd is still out of it. We have, we have, we're still in this ball game, and all we got to do is execute. It, it's, still, it's still ours to get now if we want to take it. Now, we can shut it down now, but it's still our ball game if we want it. You get a chance because you do start on the 25-yard line, uh, and you know they don't score, and you're thinking, well, all we have to do now is to kick a field goal, and we're going to win. So you're going to be conservative in your play calling, you know, a couple runs, and then um, hopefully he has under a 30, 35-yard field goal, something that he can make. Third and three. And they set that Cobbs. Taking it on the left side. That's no game. On will come Brennan O'Donohoe to try and win it in double overtime for Arkansas. This will be right at about a 35-yarder. He has his career best 45 yards already on the books tonight. And has missed only once all year. This will be angle left to right. Chuck Nally to snap it. Dowell Loggins to hold it. And now Ole Miss will try and ice O'Donohoe. I, I was wanting to go up to coach. Hey, coach, put me in. I'll block it. You know, I, it was that mentality that I had in my head, you know, because it was like the last play of the game. You're like, man, somebody has to block this play, and everybody's so tense. I'm just, just hoping we can get a block or, or uh, something and have our, our defense can step up, but I might miss it. Just hope I can get another chance to get back out there. We knelt down on the sidelines. We all took hands, you know, and we were just praying that O'Donohoe made that field goal. O'Donohoe, 35 yards for the win. Interesting. We got us a football game. There won't be any more extra point kicking. We're into the third OT. Oh. Maybe the third overtime will be the charm. And there it is. He missed it for us. And you know, that's just how things go in the vault. We get the ball to the 17 and a half yard line. We miss it by about a foot to the right. I said, OK, guys. Called them all up right then. I said, hey, we're going to be here a while now. Come on, let's play. But as a team, there, we all make mistakes. You know, I, I'm sure there's games. I, I throw interceptions. I have fumbles. People miss tackles. You don't ever point the finger at one other person. Uh, you, you stay together and keep fighting. So I called it the defense over. said, defense, got to have you. Man, for the sneak. When you get to the third overtime, it starts to get a little funky in the building. Like, you know, you're feeling a little exhausted. You know, the game takes on a whole other meeting. You have offenses that suddenly are wide open that haven't been wide open the whole game, or they're stagnant after they've been wide open the whole game. He causes a fumble at Arkansas coming up with it. Well, there's been so much talk over the years about how college football's overtime rules should be. Most people thought that when they made the change, forcing teams to go for a two-point conversion in the third overtime, that that would limit games like this. And so looking back, it's amazing to think about how Arkansas, year after year after year, for some reason, ended up in these types of games. Uh, well, I told our kids, hey, we're getting ready to get it. We're going to score and make our two-point conversion and win the game. Ole Miss has enormous gift. Will they accept it? Can they take advantage? O'Donohoe wide right on a potential game ending 35 yarder. How close was it? 
Mechanics are good. The snap's good. The hold is excellent. Pushed it. A foot. That's a Scott yep. Norwood miss. That's a he, flat wide yep. right. He was expecting to draw it in. That's what right-footed soccer-style kickers normally do. And the thing just went straight as a die. And I watched him when he went off, and everybody patted him on the butt, patted him on the shoulder, said it's okay because they may be counting him on him again. You get your kicker down there, there, and you said, that, hey, you hit it well. Don't worry about it. You're going to win the game tonight. We still need you to win the game. He kicks this time. You'll have the wind at his back. That means anything for him. Jones with the bootleg keeper. Matt Jones. Touchdown. How about the 